Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for the time that you've given us. Lord, we praise you for the opportunity to put your word out all over this planet. Lord, thank you for the truth that we can count on and stand on. We'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I want to ask you all to pray about something. We, uh, I got a message earlier today, and I don't know what, what has happened, but the local jail here in town canceled or suspended uh, programs, which is what we're part of. They suspended them for the time being, and I'm sure it's short, short-handed. I mean, it's it's sad the how short-handed the the well jails all over this nation, but right here in in Cleveland, it's it's really sad. Nobody wants to come in and and do a job like that. But but pray for them because that hinders the word going into the jail. I mean, it really does, and and uh, I see it. I see it more today than I ever have, but I had no idea in 2018 why I was supposed to do what I do on this podcast, but today it's very evident why, because if it wasn't for these tablets going out and into these jails and prisons, these guys wouldn't get anything. So so just pray for them, and and uh, I wanted to, uh, me, Missy and I went to a place up in Kentucky this week and met with some people that are that are running a, a a rehab that's pulling people off the streets and you know if they need help they get them help and uh, doing a lot of work and there there's 20 beds there they're about to expand to uh, 36 beds and then they're they're working on a uh, a women's facility and then going to into, into a longer term facility, their 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 focus is getting them dried out, and getting them off drugs, and helping them get through their first thirty days. But you pray for us. The name is uh, the next chapter. It's in Whitley City, Kentucky. We went up there and met with them, and and spent some time with them, and and told them about what we're doing and they're spoke I sent them the link for this today so maybe they're going to let their guys listen to what we're talking about but we need to get started uh I had a good time over on the mountain this week and I I, I tend not to I, I'm trying not to say where I'm going what I'm doing because you never know who's going to have a problem with it but I had a really good time where I go on Wednesday nights and uh, or Wednesdays, and the the people really are receptive up there. Everybody in the jail is, and and they 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 really took hold of what we're going to talk about tonight. So we're going to start in Hebrews, the thirteenth chapter, and the eighth verse in the King James version. Says so Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Let's go to the New Living Translation. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the and the uh, Amplified Classic, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. Now Malachi three and six. It says, I am the Lord, for I am the Lord, and I change not. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is, is how steady God is, how important it is to know that he don't change his mind about you. So this is, this is, this is something that, that I've dealt with. I'm 54 years old, and up until six, eight years ago, I struggled with that. Every day of my life, every day of my Christian life, but not not thinking something that you know. If when you stump your toe and make a mistake, thinking God's mad at you, I spent I spent a lot of years thinking that God was mad at me for making a mistake. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that, and, and I quote that scripture all the time so I can quote. Uh, 
Romans 3.24, the ones right behind it, being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. People need to know that. God said, I am the Lord, and I do not change. His love for us will never change. It never wavers. Now, shouldn't we strive? And a lot of people say, you know, you're just doing your best to let people do whatever you want to do. No, that's, not a, that's, that, that's a thousand miles away from what I want. I want. I want to teach people that they don't have to walk on eggshells in life and become strong and confident in who they are so they can help somebody else that went through the same thing they did or the same thing I did. These the, the jails and prisons all over this nation, and I'm seeing it more now. Now, You know, we, we're, we deal with 2.4 million inmates, incarcerated individuals in the United States. I, I run across this figure. Can anybody guess... How many, how many uh, prisoners get out of jail or prison, get out of federal and state prisons every year? Can you, can you even think about how many of them gets out? 650,000 people get out of prison every year. They need a place to reacclimate to the world. Can you imagine spending 10 years or 15 or 20 years in prison and getting out and seeing the world like it is today and, and remember the way it was 20 years ago, it, it, it's completely different. But most people, when they, when they look at God, they look at some unpleasable tyrant. Now, let me say this, some unpleasable human. Because a lot of God's people are unpleasable. God's a whole lot easier to please or, yeah, God is a whole lot easier to please than mankind ever will be. And we need to see this. We need to understand this. We need to know that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and keep, forever keep it on our minds that he hung on the cross and looked down at the ones that hung him there and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's what the whole sole reason I do this is to let people know that they can count on God. I was up there in Whitley City the other day, and somebody asked a question, and the Lord gave me Psalms 91. He said, they, they asked something. I don't even remember what it was, but I, I want people to understand that if you're going to be able to count on what this word says, you need to have it here. You need to have it here. You need to have your mind renewed to it. But I, I told him, I said, listen. I said, if you're, going to, uh, if you're going to benefit from what God says in his word, uh, Psalms 91 says, he who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. Talking about abiding in God's shadow. And that, that uh, can you put that up there? Uh, or Psalms 91, 1. That's the protection psalm. And you say, well, why ain't people, you know, people getting out here and getting killed in a car wreck or something? Well, there's a good reason for this. And I never, never really realized it, but he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're going to abide in the shadow of something, you've got to be real close to it. Now think about this. If you're really close to God, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it with all the confidence in the world. There ain't nothing can get to you if you're where you're supposed to be in Him. Now, that's the way I see abiding in Him. But I told him up there, I said, the, the guy that's the founder of this thing, I said, I said, I quoted this scripture, and I told him, I said, if I'm going to abide in this, he's a big old boy, and in the founder's shadow, I've got to get really close to him. I said, now, how are you going to get close to God? How are you going to uh, draw up close to him and, and stay in his shadow? And everybody's looking puzzled like, well, I don't know. Well, it takes us to this next scripture. Let's go to, the, to this next scripture, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Huh? I'm sorry. 
uh, James 4 and 7. <laughs> I thought that was in line. I'm sorry. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he sh will flee from you. The, King, the New Living Translation, it, technical difficulties. Let me read it. It says, so humble yourselves therefore before God. Resist the devil and he will free, flee from you. And the Amplified Classic says, So be subject to God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Well, I asked him, I said, how are, you going to, how are you going to submit yourself to God? Now, this is, this is exactly what I've done in five different pods Wednesday. I said, most people look at submitting to something like this. Right? And there's nothing wrong with a with going to the altar and having a, a conversation with God and, and submitting yourself. I said, people want to, want to think it's all physical. But to, to tell you the truth and what God has given me about it, if I'm going to submit myself to God, I'm going to have to submit myself to what this book says. Because if, if I can get to, if I'm going to get in his shadow and I'm going to stay in his shadow, if I'm going to abide where he is, John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So if I'm going to abide in him, I'm going to abide in this Word. Now, I told him, I said, I'm, This is not telling you to run around with a Bible stuck to your forehead. Don't be a nut. Because there's a lot of nuts out here in this world. God don't, God don't expect us to do this, but he wants us to, have our, to be ready for questions that somebody might need, to, need answered. And we're the church. We're supposed to be answering questions like this. And so they put me in front of 20, 25 guys up there in that, in that thing, and two or three of them asking questions. Well, the answers was right here, and, and the Holy Spirit had them for them like that. Why? Because... The word was in there. If, we're, if, we're, if, we're, if I'm going to subject or submit myself to God, I'm going to submit myself to what his word says. And I'm going to stand on what that word says. And I gave the guy, the founder, one of the cards, and he said, I like that. God's word is true above all opinion. And I'm, I thought to myself, yeah, and you don't know how, how much that is questioned out here in this world. Religion questions God's word all the time. Well, did he really say it that way? Did, 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 did God really want us to understand it the way uh, a denomination looks at it? I read it like it's, I, I believe it like it's read, like it's written. And that's the only thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand in is what that says. I'm not going to try, try to twist it around to meet my standards. But submitting myself... It's not necessarily physical. It's submitting my heart and my mind to what this word says. Now, like I say, going to the altar and asking God, that, that, was, that was my thoughts for years. I thought that I had to come to God on all fours with a puddle of tears under my house. That's the way I, I thought I should subject, or subject myself, and as the, Am, uh, the Amplified Classic says, or submit myself to God. Worried about whether he's going to clobber me in the head because I got out of line yesterday. That's, that's not what God's all about. He loves us and he wants, to, wants us to know it. I use this scripture all the time. The goodness of God is what leads men to repent. Because I want people to understand that I don't care where you've been, what you're doing, how many times you've done it, or, or, or where you're swimming at right now, what you're wallowing in right now. God still loves you and he cares for you and wants you to know all you have to do is run to him. I've said this here. I've said this other places. I don't care if I have to get neck deep in a sewer to get to you. 
but I'm always going to be looking back, trying to pull you back to where I, where God is instead of what you've swam off into. I don't care to get dirty one bit to help somebody see and understand that this word is what's going to carry them through. I, I've heard stories. I've heard stories about people that, that the word of God changed their life. And you know how it started? I heard one man said he used to sit down with a bottle of scotch and read the Bible. And he said, sooner or later, I didn't need that scotch anymore. Other people talking about snorting cocaine and staying up all night, all night long reading the word. And that, that word washed all that need out. God's word will change us. It'll change us. And you, go back to the uh, King James Version of that, please. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Uh, no, I'm talking about for 4-7. I wasn't finished there. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. Now, we're going to talk about something, getting the devil out of our lives, putting him out of our lives. We first got to understand who he is and what he is. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. And that picture, if you can put that up there, I don't know if you can or not, but that picture of that little mouse, little bitty mouse, man's got it by the nap of the neck. And honey, Kelsey, I don't know if you can swap that around so everybody can see it on Facebook, can you? Did you put it up there? That's who we're dealing with. Hollywood makes him eight foot tall and bulletproof. But that's what we're dealing with. When we see Satan, we will say, it is, is this the one that was trying to destroy me? When you keep that perspective... When you're submitting yourself to God, all it says to do is resist the devil. What did Jesus do when he was tempted? He said, it is written. That's all he done. Is it, it is written every time. It is written. He gave the devil the word. The word will cut you. And he cut him to death. The devil had to leave. That's what we're dealing with. And he's, he, Hollywood's, like I say, Hollywood's made him undefeatable. Eight foot tall and bulletproof. The guy with the white mask that run around that, that movie series that they ran for years and years. You, you blow him up and go around the corner, he's standing there. That's what, that's what Hollywood's made the devil out to be, undefeatable. But look here, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We got to remember that. We've got to stand on that. And when we submit ourselves to God, when we submit ourselves to, to God's word, all we have to do is resist him. And he's got to go. Now let's go on to this uh, uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. And this, this is something that the, this video will go into. I don't know how many it's approved in 919 right now, jails and prisons. But this is a picture that I want everybody that sees these videos to come to understand. That we are a, a chosen generation. If you're born again, you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him. What's the New Living say? Uh, oh, okay. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What's the New Living say? It says, but you are not like that, for you are chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Go to the Amplified Classic. It says, but you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, the majority of the church, the born-again people of this world, say... 
there's there's limits to that because of say how good you've been here lately I ask them all the time who feels like a, a royal priesthood do you feel sanctified today do you feel justified today well I'm gonna tell you something I get out of bed a lot of times and I sure don't feel sanctified right but that don't change the paperwork it don't change what this book says about it about us we are a royal priesthood and too many people live in a world that when they make a mistake instead of doing what first John 1 and 9 says see first John 1 and 9 pull that up please first John 1 and 9 the whole book was written to the church to born again children of God but most people don't look at it at it that way it says but if we confess our sins to him he is faithful and just to for, forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness that's the new living translation but that'll work I want you to understand something most people don't look at it like that that it's that easy but it is if I make a mistake what am I going to do Lord forgive me I screwed up and it's that easy but most people don't think that when they do something they think they've got to pay penance take stripes get hurt right no Jesus took all that you follow me Jesus took every bit of that punishment we don't have to live in that punishment but so many people think that when they make a mistake they've got to pay for it for six months before they can ever get back into God's graces no, Jesus died to give us that position so we didn't have to feel that way. Like I said a while ago, a lot of people will say, well, you're just trying to give people license to sin. Honey, we've been sinning without a license for a long time. No, I'm trying to get people to understand the true grace, the love, and the mercy that God has put out in his word for us to know and understand that he's for us. If we make a mistake, it's that easy to confess our sins and run to him don't run from him I run from him for a lot of years too many years a dozen years I was out of the will of God because I did not know that I could just it was that easy just to run to him I ask him all the time now I said do you know how many times I was shamed and condemned when I come back to God and they're getting it by now and most of them say zero and that's the truth God ain't out to, to hurt us in any way he wants to see us run into him and until we get these scriptures down into our hearts and make them second nature we'll always think well am I just exactly where I need to be what, what are we talking about we're a royal priesthood a chosen generation I'm gonna promise you something the rules over in England don't hesitate to think where they're where they're from and where they stand they know it they know it right you're born in a in a, a, in, a in a family like that they don't hesitate to expect what they're what they are promised through their bloodline right I mean it, there's I mean you can think of people here in this in this uh, in the United States kids that have grown up in in billionaires homes never wanted for anything they expect things we're children of God our father owns the cattle of a thousand hills he owns it all and the Bible says we're an heir to God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is not only our Savior he's our brother that brings me to this t-shirt I got these t-shirts made now I got I I found this T-shirt, not this one. I got the the original one at home, and it's uh, old and ragged, and I don't wear it anymore other than around the house. But it says a good lawyer knows the law, and a great lawyer, but a great lawyer knows the judge. And I use this T-shirt a lot in jails because I want them to understand this game is fixed if we'll just play it. Our father is the judge. He's done made up, uh, made up his mind about us. We got, we've got our, our, our great uh, defense attorney 
is our Savior. And everything, this game is fixed. We've won this game if we'll just stand in Him, abide in Him, work in Him, walk in Him. And don't let the devil distract you from what you are doing. Because I promise you, he's about, he's about his business. He wants, he, he's persistent. You can give him that. I don't, I don't even like to talk about what, what Satan does, but he is one thing, and that is consistent and persistent. I, I've, I've told this before. Years ago, I used to feel like that somebody had put a big four-inch ratchet strap around my chest and just cranked it to where I couldn't hardly take a breath. So much stress and, and anxiety of dealing with what I dealt with years ago in my business. But when I come started seeing and understanding what God had done for me through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, that I could stand on those promises, casting all my cares on him. You know, a lot of people look at me and say, you ain't got a care in the world. You just, you know, I said, I don't. I really don't. Why? Because my Savior carries them. I, I ain't going to worry about it anymore. I'm done worrying about it. You know why? Because he died to make sure everything's taken care of. And I'm going to cast every bit of it on him. Because he's the one that can carry it. I wasn't supposed to carry that mess to start with. I wasn't supposed to carry it to start with. I'm, I'm going to tell you, tell you something that years ago, I probably wouldn't have told you this two years ago. But now that I know my path, years ago, my son was, what was he, five maybe, when we left. We, I threw up my hands and quit. And to tell you the truth, it felt like 10,000 pounds was lifted off my shoulders when I left structured church. Not here. But where I was at. And for years I thought, that's the best thing I've done in a long time. And it was. You know why it was? Because I was carrying every bit of it on my shoulders. But over the years, the devil put that strap around my chest. And I started carrying a worse load than I ever did over there. Why? Because I didn't know where I stood with God. I struggled with it. I worried with it. I, everybody says, well, you used out of the will of God for years, for a dozen years. But I prayed just about every day because I never, I, I knew I, where I, where, what I was doing was wrong, but I had no idea how to get back to where I'd left. I had no idea. But I want you to understand something. Like I said, God is a lot easier to please than man will ever be. When I come to God, the only thing he ever told me, I come back to him. He didn't condemn me, didn't do anything. He said, I love you, boy, but if, you're going, if I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to, you've got, you got a whole lot of forgiving to do. There's a whole lot of people out here in this world. I picked up the phone and called. We'd had problems, and a lot of the problems stem from them. But you know what i done? I said, it's my fault. I wasn't a Christian. I should have been to you and in front of you and took the blame for all of it. God wants us to understand something today. If we will humble ourselves before man, he'll exalt us in due time. I promise you that. He loves us and he cares for us. We are that chosen generation, that royal priesthood. And it is my... Uh, I don't know, commission in life to teach people what this book says about them because this book is the only thing that matters. A thousand years from now, the only thing that's going to matter in Stacy Hayes' life is what I've done for him. That's it. There ain't a soul on this planet going to be alive that's alive today is going to be alive in a thousand years. The only thing that's going to matter is what we have done for the kingdom of God, period. Took me a long time to figure that out. 
But when I come to understand that, I come to realize that all these years was preparing me to do what I'm doing today. And I'm not going to get into it. It'd take another two hours to talk to talk, tell y'all what the Lord's laid on our hearts. But I want you to understand something that God wants. He will equip us and send us. He, he says, go out to all the world and preach the gospel. What is that? Proclaim the good news. Proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and what he done. Go to 21. 1 Peter 2, 21. It says, for hereunto you, are, you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his footsteps or his steps. The New Living Translation says, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. The Amplified Classic says, For even in this were you called. It is inseparable for, uh, from your vocation. For Christ also suffered for you, leaving you his personal example, so that you should follow in his footsteps. Now, I, I asked the guys up there in the, in the jail Wednesday, I said, Listen, what is that example? And I'm going to ask you all, what is the example that Christ left us. It's only one. It's love. To follow in his footsteps. To follow, in it, to follow Christ. Is to love the people around us. The, the, the attorney came. The lawyer came and asked Jesus. He said, what is the greatest commandment? He said love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy soul. With all thy mind. He said the second is like unto it. To love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, upon these two hang all the law and the prophets. Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. He says, for he that loves another has fulfilled the law. People struggle, struggle trying to fulfill the commandments. Just the ten. They struggle every day with it. But yet, Paul said it. He said, if you'll leave it, love each other and be in debt to somebody for that love. Now, that's something. If, if you're, I, 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 want to, I want to be debt-free as far as material things are concerned. But I always remember that I'm in debt to every human being on this planet for God's love. And they say, well, how do you how do, you do that? I, I've got feelings about People that I'd like to master mouth. And in jail, you know, you, you see a lot of people like that. You know, I'm wound up at the guy across the hall. How do you overcome that? I'm going to tell you how. Romans 5 and 5. Because if, if, if uh, we're born again, the same spirit that, that raised Christ from the dead dwells in every one of our his born again children. And if you're born again... God's Spirit dwells in you. Listen, it says, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, love is a decision. What is compassion? Have you ever thought about it? Compassion, compassion a lot of times people want to people have a, a feeling of compassion. Compassion is a decision. You have to decide to have compassion on somebody that just cannot get out of the position they're in without your help. Right? If, if some, there's people out here on the streets, in the prisons, in jails, and rehabs, and, and all kinds of different places that they can't get out of the position that, they, uh, that they're in without our help. Now, what are we going, what are we going to have to do is follow Christ's example. And that example is love. Love. To look at somebody that is tattooed from their hairline to their heels 
and love them. Right? Look at someone that has been strung out for years and, and don't care where they've been. Love them enough to give them what you've got. And that's love, God's love, God's forgiveness, God's support. You follow me? And the more, we fo- the more we stand in these scriptures and the more we follow in his footsteps, the more we're going to look out here in this world and not see a problem, but see something that we can really make an impact on. I told him yesterday, I said, look, I'm only up here once a week. And I thoroughly enjoy Wednesdays. I really do. I mean, this place is just open to me. I go in and go into the different pods, and, and just every, most everybody in there just sits down. They, they say, well, he's waiting on you, and just sits down and, and, and listens. But there's, there's, I tell them, I say, listen, I can't make the impact. That y'all can. And that's the truth. In, a, in the prisons, you look around, the ones in orange, there's some in there that are really doing something. The guy that left over here in Cleveland went up there, and then now he got sent on to prison. He's not there anymore. He, the, first, the first week he was there, they put him in a 100-man dorm, and the first week he had 30. The second week, he had 60. They moved him on, moved him to another dorm. He's already got his classification. He's already got his uh, job. He's staying over there till when he gets parole. And he called me the other day. He said, he said, man, he said, just doors are opening left and right. I said, you're one of them, Chad. You're one of them. Use it to your advantage. Help them, God, they need it. People, this world needs what we've got. It needs what we've got. It needs to know that they are, that the born-again children of God of this world needs to know that they're a royal priesthood. They're in the lineage of Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, and can count on what He has promised them. Stand in it and know it. They need to know it because, look, we ain't out of places to preach. I'll never be out of a place to preach. I, I promise you, I'll never be out of a place to preach. When they sent that text out earlier today, said that we're going to shut this, uh, these programs down for a while, I didn't even bat eye. It's all right. That, that podcast is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, these videos are doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Because I go to the mailbox every day. Uh, uh, expecting letters and I get them from from jails and prisons I told them yesterday I said I've got friends all over this nation in prison people I've got to know and and uh, grown to love and 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 I'm not talking about with with godly love but love them as a person you know really know them and I've got one guy he's in Jonesville uh Virginia, he writes me every, at least two or three times a month. He, he, he don't have phone privileges right now. He said, I'll be glad to be able to talk. You know, we're writing letters, and it takes two, two weeks for them to get cycled through. But I've got friends all over the place in prison. I don't even ask them what they've done. I don't care what they've done. You know why? God's forgiven them for it, and he's forgot about it, and I ain't the one that's going to bring it up. God wants us to understand something. That's love. That's compassion. That's the example that Jesus set for us, for us to walk in the footsteps of him. He wants us to, and he wants us to know that we are capable of doing that in him, not in our goodness. I never understood how I could come boldly to God's throne. Hebrews 4, 16, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. I never understood how I could come boldly into the presence of God and not feel condemned and shamed. You know why I didn't? Because I didn't know where I stood with him. I didn't have the confidence I do today because of what this book has shown me over the years, that I am a chosen priesthood, 
a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, sanctified, set aside, justified in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Now, these people out here in this world that look at us, I know, I know people right now, they look out the corner of their eye when they see me. Yep, I know where you've been. Now, I'm just, I'm just standing over here waiting for you to do it again. It's too late. It ain't going to happen. I know where I stand with him. Jesus Christ died to free us, freed every, to free every human being on this planet from that shame and condemnation. Religion wants to twist it up and make us feel like that we're, we're worthless. We'll never be, we be good for anything over the mistakes we have made. I heard a, a story about a waiter one time. He said, he said I, I found that Sundays are the worst days in the world for me. A male waiter, you know, waits tables. He said, but I got, I got to know a group of church people one time. They loved me and they cared for me. And he said, they won me to God. He said, I got born again. Best thing I ever done. He said, but I messed up. And he said, those same people turned on me like a rabid dog. I ain't, that ain't even funny. Look, God loves us. And he wants more than anything for us to know that he, he'll forgive you no matter where you're at, what you have done or how many times you've done it. And luckily that man knew that. But he said those people, the same ones that cared for me and helped me along and lifted me up, he said, I stumped my toe and fell flat on my face. And he said, they turned on me like I was dirt. That ain't God. God's a lot easier to please than that. If we mess up, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All means all in Japanese, Chinese, uh, Spanish, Greek, Hebrew. I ain't no Greek scholar and I sure ain't no Ph.D. pastor. But I know all means all. He's justified and loved us all. And he loves us all and wants more than anything for us to know it. Go to uh, 1 Peter 3.18. It says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins and just for the, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, but being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. The New Living Translation says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He, he never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Spirit. The Amplified Classic says, For Christ the Messiah himself died for sin once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous, the just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty, that he might bring us to God. In his human body, he was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit. I look at that last scripture, and that once for all just jumps out. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever died once for every human being on this planet or ever, li ever has lived here ever will lived here he died once for all as a sacrifice so that we could walk free of all the shame and condemnation that hinders a majority of God's born again children let alone the lost people out here in this world God wants us to know and realize something, that it's up to us. We're his hands and his feet. We're the church. Christ is the head, but we're the church. It's not this building. It's us. And fitly joined together, this is the way we're supposed to be. But the church is splintered. 
The only thing that holds it together is the, the common thread of Jesus Christ. The rest of it, most people's arguing about doctrine instead of doing what God says and being in unity of faith in him, faith in Christ Jesus. We want, God wants us to understand that we can stand on Christ's sacrifice and what he done. And I want you to know something. I do this every time I do a video, and I, I, I'm not, I'll never stop doing it. I want to ask you something today. Are you born again? I want to ask you, I'm not asking you if you beg God to forgive you 10,000 times because we all have. I'm asking you, have you ever asked Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life and made him Lord? Romans 10 and 9 says, if, you, you, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It don't say you might be if you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's just right. It don't say you might be if you're perfect. It says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that, Christ, that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. It says that, it, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Make Jesus Lord today. I'm not asking you to have a, an emotional, uh, emotional experience at the altar. I'm asking you to make a decision that, Jesus, that you want to, Jesus to be Lord of your life and confess that out loud before him by faith believe that that he died on the cross for your sins and and god raised him from the dead to justify you believe that and know it make him lord today and if you are born again get in this scripture study with us go back to june the 21st if you're or if you're on the podcast Go all the way back to June 21st of 2021 and listen all the way through this whole thing. But if you're, if you're watching these videos, go back to week one and go through these scriptures with us. If you want one of these cards, I'll mail you one or a copy of one. The young ladies that asked for one, I hope you've got it by now. I got your last message, your last letter, and that we had uh, mailed them like a week before that. But I'm, they obviously hadn't got to you yet. But get in this study with us. Find out what God says you are. Find out who God says you are. And leave the rest of that mess behind. Throw the religion out. And go with what God's word says. To you, for you, and about you. Because I promise you, God's word will carry you when everything else fails. God's word is true above all opinion. And he wants you to know that he's for you, and he'll carry you when you can't walk. You, you, know, you say, how's he going to do that? He's going to do that through the truth in his word. If you've not born again tonight, make Jesus Lord of your life. Confess him as Lord. And if you are, get in this book and find out what thus saith the word of God about you. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for the time that you've given us. Lord, I praise you for your word and the truth in your word. I praise you that we can count on that truth. Lord, I pray for the people that watch this video 10 years from now. I pray that they open their hearts and that they allow the seed of your word to take root in their hearts. That they come to know and realize that they can count on what you have said above anything else in this world. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing. All you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.